I am very pleased to welcome you all to the 2013-14 academic year at SUNY College of Westbury and to open the President's Fall Convocation. My name is M.L. Langley and I serve as the Vice President for Student Affairs. It is very good to see so many new students in, the, in attendance. I've had the pleasure of meeting many of you during the many summer orientation programs we've had this year. I hope your first week in classes has been productive and that you are adjusting well to Old Westbury. Let me also offer a very special welcome to members of the faculty who have joined us here today. Thank you for being with us. I also must thank our performers today, the ensemble, for providing the music we have enjoyed and will enjoy throughout the program. Can we have another round of applause, please? Today's President's Convocation was developed to serve as an event to welcome new first year and new transfer students to Old Westbury. In effect, today may be the only time prior to graduation that you as an undergraduate class are all gathered as one. During this program, we will seek to welcome you, to entertain you, and to inspire you. Mostly, we hope to add to the motivation you already have shown in your pursuit of a higher education achievement. We will close, the we'll close the convocation today by 12.50 to ensure that those of you who have one o'clock classes can make your way there. When we leave, all in attendance will be given a commemorative pin. This pin marks the beginning of your time at Old Westbury, and I urge you to keep it, to add to it, and to wear it on your graduation robe at gra on graduation day. We will now continue our program with remarks by the current Student Government Association president, I am very pleased to welcome to the podium Mr. Nick Saba, the 2013-14 president of the Old Westbury Student Government Association. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I first wanted to thank Dr. Butts actually for allowing me to at least have this opportunity to welcome everybody to the full convocation of 2013. So thank you again. Um, on behalf of the Student Government Association, it is my honor and pleasure to welcome the class of 2017 to your new family. So welcome. College is about making memories. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> College is about making memories, and Old Westbury has plenty of memories to offer. As each of you embark on this new chapter in life, Keep in mind that these next few years are supposed to be rigorous, stimulating, and unpredictable all at the same time. You will make tough decisions that will instill core values needed for your development here, which may include taking ownership, time management, or ethical decision making. If you are ever struggling with anything along this journey, our Panther community has a heart of gold and we are willing to assist you along the way. I am certain that Old Westbury will be extremely kind and rewarding to you as it has been for my peers and myself. <laughs> However, you will soon learn that great rewards aren't just handed to you. You must work diligently and strive for the top in order to obtain them. <laughs> Take the first step by getting out of your comfort zone and remember to dream big, that's very important. In student affairs, there's a saying called self-discovery. I can honestly say that the easiest way to discover who you are is by getting involved. I joined the Student Government Association during my first year here and can't fathom how much experience and just, you know, just life-changing, I guess, opportunities I had. And especially for the real world, which is very important too. Um, learn how to be a great leader and enjoy the responsibilities that come along with joining the various clubs, Greek letter organizations, or the many sports teams we offer here. If you want to learn more about what we have to offer, come out to our club bash on September 3rd during Common Hour. It's going to be outside of the NAB, so please come. And don't be afraid to meet new people and try new things. Just be yourself and you will succeed or be successful in your endeavors. Please remember to utilize what our campus has to offer. That's another key component. Okay, Our campus has a lot to offer you, so please use them. Visit the Career and Development Center for resume and job assistance. The Counseling Center for when you're feeling stressed and need to vent and the Center for Student Leadership and Involvement for when you're ready to take on leadership positions. The only advice that I can give you is truly to have fun. Enjoy campus life and activities. Take advantage of all the resources we offer. Make mistakes. 
learn from your diverse peers, and just know that it's okay to change your major, or even change it again if you have to. In college, there are no rehearsals. These will be some of the best years of your life. So thank you again, and welcome to our campus. Thank you, Nick. I now have the pleasure of bringing forward our Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. Dr. Patrick O'Sullivan has been with SUNY College at Old Westbury since joining the then new business program in 1975 as an assistant professor. He went on to serve as a department chair and in 1999 as a founding dean of the School of Business. Today he serves as the leader of the college's academic programs and services. As provost and vice president for academic affairs, he is responsible for all the administration and presentation of all academic activities on campus. From helping and supporting the faculty who teach to supervising the activities of such offices as registrar and, and services for students with disabilities. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Patrick O'Sullivan. Thank you. And welcome to Old Westbury. I'm the one who gave out that, uh, who put together that green sheet that you're looking at or may have looked at. It looks like this. I want you to focus on it as I talk to you. The reason is that I think it will be very helpful to you while you're at Old Westbury. If you look at the first paragraph, I'd like you to read it as I make a few points. We are finishing, pretty much, the first week of classes. For the full semester, the full semester, there will be 15 weeks of classes. One is already just about done. That leaves about 28 classes, two meetings per week. If we subtract at least two meetings from the 28 for examinations, we're at 26. If you're absent once or twice, we're down to 24. The point I'm trying to make is that you can get lost or overwhelmed very, very rapidly as freshmen are those who are coming to Old Westbury for the first time. Faculty have a certain amount of material to cover, and they will do so. Some of you will think it's much too rapid, but they have the job to do, they have the material to cover, they have the responsibility. Therefore, you really have to attend class and you have to take a very decent set of notes. The notes that you take in class will be the unifying factor for the readings, the presentations, the discussions, and the lectures. A good set of notes are invaluable. I'd like you to focus looking at the 10 points, or at least looking at the first point in the handout that I have provided for you. It says, concentrate on the opening remarks. Faculty are accustomed to introducing the material that they're going to present at the class meeting. They're used to repeating some of that material and some of those remarks. You should concentrate on those opening remarks. I'm not going to go through all 10 points, but I want now to turn the page over and go to point six. Many times when I was giving a class presentation, I was told I was speaking too quickly. The problem was that members of the class, the students in the class, were trying to copy down everything that I said as if everything was equally important. It isn't. So therefore, the best you can do is, in taking notes, is take an outline. And as it says there, take only outline notes. 
There's a further explanation, and you can read that on your own. Number eight says, ask questions. If there is some confusion in the presentation, if you miss something, it is your responsibility to ask the questions. You should, as point nine refers to, you should review and revise your notes. Many times it was mentioned to me, sometimes almost right before the final examination, that the student wasn't sure what I was going to ask in the final examination. In many cases, I asked to see their notebooks, the class notes. And I could see clearly from the way the notes were taken that the student was really having a, a significant problem that couldn't be handled quickly. I'm trying to impress upon you that you can get lost very quickly, that you'll be asked to read hundreds and hundreds of pages, that you will be faced with faculty who have many different ways of teaching their classes. They will cover the material at a different pace. Math classes are presented different from humanities classes. Science classes different again. And so you need to adjust to these. Now, when you feel that you are losing the material or not getting that which you should be getting, you need to ask for help. My last point will be this. Make sure that you get to know at least one faculty member, one, to whom you can go to for help, for advice, for counsel. There are many, many services that we provide in academic affairs. There are tutoring, there's advising and the like. There's a writing center. You need to find out what services are available to you and you should do it quickly. You'll be having an examination in about five weeks. It will be covering the first five or six weeks of class. That can be a lot of material. So be conscious of the time. Freshmen usually get into trouble because they have a lot of freedom. In closing, review this sheet several times. It will help you take better notes. It will help you learn. Thank you.
keep chasing pavement Even if it leads nowhere Or would it be a waste Even if I knew my place Should I leave it there Should I give up Or should I just keep chasing pavement Chasing pavements, even if it leads nowhere. Or oh, would it be a waste? Even if I knew my place, should I leave it there? Or should I give up? Or should I just keep on chasing pavements? Or should I just keep on chasing pavements? Or should I? Just Keep on chasing pavement. Or should I just keep on chasing pavement? Should I give up or should I just keep chasing pavement? Even if it leads nowhere. Now I have the pleasure of introducing the leader of our college, President Calvin O. Butts III. It has been my pleasure to work with K President Butts for nearly five years now. And what I can tell you is that Dr. Butts cares deeply about Old Westbury students and he is always interested to know what is important to you and what you are thinking about. Our college benefits from having as its president a leading and powerful voice on issues related to education, community, economic development, religion, youth empowerment, and more. Dr. Butts has been recognized countless times for his vision and leadership across our state, nation, and around the world. As president since 1999 of what U.S. News & World Report recognizes as one of the most diverse liberal arts colleges in America, Dr. Butts has led with a determination to prepare Old Westbury students to succeed in the global marketplace. At the same time, he challenges all who work and teach here to foster in each student leadership qualities that will prove valuable to both themselves and the communities in which they live. Under Dr. Butts' leadership, the college has accomplished, mu accomplished much, including earning accreditation from the National Council for Accreditation of Teachers Education for its School of Education, launching a mandatory civic engagement program embedded within the college's curriculum for first-year students that has earned national acclaim, opening the Honors College, overhauling campus facilities, including the construction of our new academic building and all of the work that you see around campus today, including renovations of the Campus Center and the Campus Library, and much, much more. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to introduce you to you today, Dr. Calvin Obus III, President of SUNY at the College of O. Westbury. Good afternoon. I want to thank uh, Dr. M. L. Langley, our Vice President uh, for Student Affairs, for leading us in this president's convocation. Please give her a round of applause for her leadership. <laughs> I'm also grateful to Nick Sava, the president of our Student Government Association. Thank you for being here and thank you for your remarks. I think they were appropriate and I think that the audience appreciated everything you had to say. A round of applause for Nick Sava. I'd also like to thank the wonderful musicians who have performed here contemporary pieces of music meant to inspire you and hopefully engage you in the cultural programs of the State University of New York College at Old Westbury. Thank our musicians. And also to Dr. Patrick O'Sullivan, one of the longest serving faculty members and administrators at our institution. I encourage you to pay close attention to everything that he has shared with you this afternoon, and particularly that green sheet. 
it will serve you well. Every year we have a closing convocation, and at that convocation I'm pleased to welcome some of the outstanding students who graduate from the State University College at Old Westbury. These are men and women who have come, many of them, through very difficult challenges, but they have achieved perfect 4.0 averages. They have come to graduate after overcoming some substantial obstacles, and many of them are saluted and applauded. I hope that you will be among them when you graduate, and I know that you can if you pay attention to that green sheet. Thank our provost and vice president for academic affairs, Dr. Patrick O'Sullivan. To all of the students, to the esteemed faculty of this great institution, to any members of the College Council or College Foundation who may be present, to the full administration and to the staff here at the State University College at Old Westbury, good afternoon. I'm pleased to serve as the president of this great institution, now moving into my 15th year. And as president, I'm very happy to have participated in partnership with the administrators and the faculty and the staff of invigorating this great institution now in its 50th year. We uh, celebrate our school because it is unique in many ways. But one of the things that we've been able to accomplish over the last decade and more is that we've been able to rebuild uh, the technical structure, the physical structure, and the cultural and human structure of this institution so that those of you who are coming here for the first time are truly entering into an incredible family, a great institution, and one that will prepare you for facing the challenges of the 21st century. Many of you have heard over the last several days many references, and rightly so, to the great march on Washington 50 years ago. And of course, you can't know that march or make reference to that march without making reference to one of the founding fathers as described by Time Magazine, Martin Luther King Jr. and his incredible I Have a Dream speech. Old Westbury was born out of the struggles of that era, out of the swamps of Philadelphia, Mississippi, and rising from the ashes of a church in Birmingham, Alabama, where the lives of four little girls were stolen from them by rabid racists. Out of the fires that came from the struggle of the civil rights movement came the phoenix of the State University at Old Westbury, a college dedicated to social justice and making a way for men and women to navigate successfully not only the end of the 20th century, but certainly into the 21st century, the changing of a millennium we are very pleased that we are part of the pedagogical experiment that has given rise to one of the most diverse campuses in the United States of America. And it has been led by a faculty dedicated to making sure whether it's the physical sciences, the humanities, whether it's education, whether it's cultural development, to making sure that our students were able to take advantage of every human culture and civilization on this planet. So as you move around this college, what you will discover in its diversity, men and women who are really representing the world. At one time when I was in school, they talked a lot about the megalopolis. That was the connection between Boston and Washington, D.C., and all of the great cities in between, like New York and Newark and Philadelphia. Now they're talking about the Technopolis, and that is an ever-expanding network. If you get a chance, read uh, Al Gore's book, The Future, Six Drivers of Global Change, and you will see things like social media, huh? the Google screen, the Google Glass, such that in real time, a surgeon can look through a square in his or her glasses and be able to talk to other surgeons around the world, if you will, in real time. These things make this no longer the unconquerable globe of Columbus, but now a ten tiny little sphere of intermixing cultures and civilizations. And right here at Old Westbury, 
you'll be able to participate in that change so that when you leave this college, you'll not only be eligible for jobs on Long Island, you'll be eligible for jobs anywhere in the world, and that is your competition. I met students here this morning from Brazil. That's your competition. There are students here from China. That's your competition. There are students here from India and other parts of the world. They represent the global competition for jobs, and excellence is the only way. You will not any longer, and rightly so, be judged by the color of your skin. You will be judged by the content of your character. Old Westbury rises out of that struggle, and we intend to build the character of all of our students such that, whether it's medicine, whether it's humanities, whether it's dance, whether it's song, whatever it is, whether it's the, the, the visual arts in any capacity, you'll be able to compete on a global scale and have an appreciation for the diversity that surrounds you on this campus because it's a world diversity. I've got to tell you, my dearly beloved students and friends, that as you come to this institution, you'll be challenged. And I hope that the challenges of getting an education, computer glitches, class cancellations, the challenges of getting an education, parking so far away that you have to walk so long to get to your class, that the challenges of getting an education will not hamper your desire to have an education. There are challenges. Of course there are challenges. There are worldwide challenges. Men and women who sit in high places have challenges. But those men and women of character are always able to overcome their challenges. Martin Luther King, in his speech, said that we should not be judged by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. What is character? Everybody assumes that they just know what it is, but I'm going to give you several things that I hope will help you to navigate not only Old Westbury, but the world. First of all, character is the capacity to endure. The race is not given to the swift, but to those who endure to the end. We want you to finish in four years. That's what you should do. But some of you, because of family challenges, because of work, because of health, it may take you a year or two longer. But don't give up. Character, those men and women who can endure to the end, who can hold on, who in spite of whatever obstacles are put in front of them, continue to press on toward the goal of the high calling. Those men and women who are able to make sure that even in the midst of horror all around them, Thomas Jefferson, all persons are created equal. At the same time, he owned slaves, a big obstacle, a hypocrisy. But yet, the union still preserves itself. Abraham Lincoln, faced with the horrors of slavery and an advancing Southern army, yet he held on to the end, and the union preserves itself. John F. Kennedy, faced with the horrors all around him, killed in the midst of it, but his spirit lives on and the union preserves itself. Those who have the capacity to endure. Your students, these students, our students are going to have a lot put on them. And the students who are here today, don't let those obstacles to an education quell your desire for an education. Read long into the night. Study hard endure to the end, and you will succeed here at the college at Old Westbury. There is a nurturing of the love of beauty. That's what character is about. You appreciated Adele's song, Chasing Pavements. I read in the Times that we lost Marion McPartland, one of the great jazz pianists of our time. Cedar Walton, another great jazz pianist. I noticed that we lost George Duke, another great musician. What beauty is there in the visual arts? We have on our campus Professor Mac Adams, one of the great purveyors of visual arts in the world. Do you appreciate what the artists have put before your eyes? The music that you hear and are not just given up to the mechanical music that's pumped out on across many of our radio stations today? 
When you engage here at the college at Old Westbury, you'll be confronted by faculty who will expose for you the beauty that's in our culture, but not only in the culture that's called American, the United States of America, but in the culture that's throughout the world. I mentioned Brazil earlier. I mentioned China earlier. I mentioned India earlier. All of these great cultures contribute tributaries to the magnificent river that makes up the cultural experience of the world. Huh. This is what Old Westbury is about. And so I hope that you will develop and nurture a love for beauty and that you will respect the beauty in each human being. Respect the men on our campus. Respect the women on our campus. Respect those who have different sexual orientation on our campus. You've got to learn to respect the whole spectrum of humanity. And we are all beautiful. And it is marvelous in our eyes. And so we encourage you to nurture and develop an appreciation of beauty. To nurture and develop a capacity to endure. But also a concern for courtesy. That's what character is about. If someone is speaking, as Dr. O'Sullivan was, you just don't walk across and start speaking to someone else. You're courteous of him because you respect. You have to look again at who he is. When you pass someone in the hall and you have to walk across, you say, excuse me. These sound like small, trivial things to you. But courtesy helps us to negotiate the world better. And it helps us to develop a healthy respect for each other. We may not understand somebody else's custom. Ask. That's what an education is about. And then if you are asked, explain. A concern for courtesy. It's holding a door so that someone else can walk through it. It's making sure the elevator does not close in someone else's face. It's an appreciation for the beauty of your campus when you see someone throw a paper down, you say, no, this is our campus. We try to keep it beautiful, even though you may get a terrible, ugly response. It's picking up the paper, even if they won't. It's a concern for courtesy. It's coming to your class on time and not interrupting your other students who are there early enough to hear the beginning of the lecture. And understanding if your professor asks that you excuse yourself because you're too late to benefit. A concern for courtesy. This is character. And it's one of the things that we have to have if we're going to build an institution, and it does not matter. You've got to understand, beloved, that this now is a world where the history of the world is so much greater than when I was in school. So when you graduate from Old Westbury, it's almost like having a double major. You've got to have the sciences under your belt. You've got to know the humanities. And so a concern for courtesy, nurturing a love for beauty, the capacity to endure, these are the things that add to a man or woman's character. And that's what we hope to do here at the State University College at Old Westbury, to build your character. Right now, the world is in turmoil. We're not sure what our government will do, but we know that we don't want our government to enter into another conflict. We don't want our young men and women, the very flower of our nation, to be sent off to war. But we don't want the horrors of an evil society to destroy human lives innocently. You are the leaders of tomorrow. What creativity can you think of? What debate can we enter into? Politics, economics, society. What will we debate in our classes? How can we tackle the laws of our society? When you leave here, there's one more thing. As you look around the world today, many of the conflicts come because poor people are standing at attention. They're tired of being poor. And one of the elements of character is the avoidance of luxury. There's no reason in the world why one small percentage of the world population should control all of the resources of the other 99%. And that 99%, if all else fails to organize people, conditions will. Hungry stomachs, the absence of technology. This is the world we're going into. 
the avoidance of luxury. No, you're not going to have a red carpet rolled out. You may have to walk an extra minute to get to a class. But here you're getting a great value. Men and women are spending forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year for an education, 60. The state of New York taxpayer money is going in to allow us to build a campus where you get a quality of an education that's better than some of that $60,000 tuition. Avoid luxury. And even in your family life, when you go out to shop, watch it. All they want to do is get in your pocket. Invest your money in things that have eternal values. Avoid luxury. When you learn to endure, when you nurture a love for beauty, when you have a concern for courtesy, and when you learn how to avoid luxuries and focus on necessities, then you have character. And a man or woman of character cannot be stopped except by those who threaten their lives. We've seen many great men and women. Abraham Lincoln, I mentioned him earlier, was assassinated. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, I mentioned him earlier, was assassinated. Martin Luther King Jr., I mentioned him earlier, was assassinated. Schwerner, Goodman, and Cheney were pulled out of that swamp that I talked about. Four little girls were killed in that Birmingham church that was bombed. Oh, yes, my friends, men and women of character run a great risk. But without them, we would not have the union that we fight so hard to preserve. And without them, those students who have come from all over the world to study here would not have the opportunity provided by our great nation. So the last thing I will tell you, in order to be a successful student at Old West Bay, is to believe in yourself, to stand tall with character and courage, and to go forward to get all the learning you can and then enter the 21st century with the certain assurance that if your mind can conceive it, your heart can believe it, then your hands can achieve it. And nothing is impossible to you. I'm your president and I'm glad to serve in that capacity. There are men and women on the faculty much smarter than I and much more articulate than I. And they seek to meet you in the classes every day. They will teach you, challenge them, make them teach, respect them, and you will benefit. And your experience at Old Westbury will make us a stronger institution. And four years from now, we, you will see another new class come in as you go out. But you will know that because of your contribution of character, your hard work, and your belief in yourself, you will have left this institution better than you found it. That's all that we ask. God bless you and welcome to the State University College at Old West Bay. We're going to call back now our musicians and uh, this is the first time I'm seeing this but they're going to sing When You Believe and that's what I want you to do. Believe in yourself.
swiftly flown away but now I'm standing here my heart's so full I can't explain seeking faith and speaking words I never thought I'd say Are they wonderful or what? As you embark on this new chapter in your life, I hope you will approach the work and experiences of this academic year with an open mind and some humility about the things professors ask you to learn and think about. The meaning and importance of what you will learn may not actually become clear until many years after you graduate. Before I close, I want to thank faculty and staff for their dedication and hard work. What I have learned in my time at Old Westbury is that these people are here because of their commitment to your learning and success. Students, I urge you to get to know your professors and the staff you will meet as the relationships that you will build with them during your time will be an important part of your education. As we close the 2013 Fall President's Convocation, I wish each of you a successful and productive academic year. God bless.